What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Fox Chamber. As you can see by the thumbnail, we are doing some micro squirt things today. And uh, check out what I got. The actual computer itself, the hookups, and this right here is placing the BAP sensor. This is gonna be the MAP sensor, which is gonna be hooked up to the firewall. This is the hookup that's gonna hook up to the computer, of course. And this is the actual computer itself. But uh, yeah, and I got my installation instructions. Yep. So we're gonna make an attempt to do that. Why are you doing that, you may ask. I'm doing it because I want to be able to do a little bit more programming with this thing. Actually, I've had this thing about, geez, over a year now. Before I went to Foxtoberfest last year, what well, my goal was when I first got it, was I was going to put this thing on and go to Foxtoberfest. But a friend of mine told me that since everything is stock, it can pretty much run off the regular computer that's in there, ECU or whatever you want to call it, that's in there. but. Eh, I've been dealing with startup issues and stuff like that, not wanting to run, changing filters out and stuff like that. As Brutal said in his video, these things, the fuel injected cars are aggravating to, to program and to get tuned just right. But I don't want to go carbureted. I like, I like my, I guess I like aggravation or whatever because I'm going to keep my um, fuel injection. But as he said, yeah, these things are aggravating to program and get them running right. But maybe I could do a little bit better programming if I have this micro squirt hooked up and I'd be able to, you know, tinker with it just a little bit to make it run right and maybe stop it from running rich because it's still running a little rich. But uh, let's get started taking this thing apart. Yeah, first things first, you gotta take off the kick panel and um, access the computer. It ain't nothing but, uh, you might have to take out a screw here, screw there, and then pop this thing out. But sometimes you have a little push pin right here and uh, pull this off and access the computer. I want to tell you all one thing. There's a, um, <laughs> it might be a better way to do this because uh, Gearhead704, he mentioned it in his video, him and Matt, um, he mentioned it at a Fox Mustang restoration. You could drop the, the blower motor and access it through there. But since my tabs for my computer are already broken, we're gonna do this a different way. I'm gonna show you. Here, computer's out. Okay, now the thing we need is a, I think it's a 10 millimeter bolt. I think that's a 10 millimeter bolt and this right here pops right off. Computer's out. All right, so now we gotta get the micro squirt and plug in. Well, we got the micro squirt hooked up. Got it all in, got this plugged in. Yep, I haven't mounted it yet. I'm gonna wait, get everything going first before I find a spot to mount it. More than likely, I'm gonna try to find a spot to tuck it up into the firewall. Well, right there around the kit, under the kick panel area. Yep, we'll find a spot for that in a little bit. But right now, we gotta find the BAP sensor under the hood next to the firewall so we can replace it and put in the MAP sensor that came with the kit. Okay, lotion. Okay, location of the BAP sensor. This is it, right here. And this is going to take the place of it. It's going to be mounted right against the firewall, just as the BAP sensor is. We're going to place it with this and, of course, the hookups. As you can see, I got all the, all the wires connected as per the instruction. Got them shrink wrapped and ready to go. Now all I do is just mount this to the firewall. We'll be good to go with that. So let me get that connected. That might be good enough for it. Well, got my map mounted. Isn't that pretty sturdy? I'm gonna keep an eye on this thing right here, make sure we don't start rubbing against that. All right, 
Maps installed. Uh, conveniently, this right here is the uh, the connection I used to hook the Mr. Fusion into the test and see if I had any vacuum leaks. I'm gonna use the same line to hook up to the map. And I just dropped my screw. But fits on there real good. That's connected. Because it has to be hooked up to an inter, uh, to manifold uh, vacuum line. And it is going to my manifold. So that's good to go. Just looking at the instructions again. It says that um, I can disconnect my mass airflow sensor. It can be removed at this time if so desired uh, as using this is optional. Then reconnect the battery and the installation of the hardware and everything like that is completed. I'm gonna leave the um, map, or excuse me, I'm gonna leave the mass airflow connected for the time being. I'm gonna see how that works out with it connected. But it said it is optional. So I'm gonna go with it uh, connected for right now. Let's see what we gotta do next. Yeah, just getting the getting the computer fired up. But let's read on what it says here. So it's got already got a factory startup tune in it. Once that thing gets fired up all the way, we're gonna go ahead and start this thing up and see exactly what we got going on. I got the already got the desktop loaded on the computer and or the little I guess the, the function screen or whatever you want to call it. I got it already loaded on there. I'm having a reason this acting a fool right now. I'm having issues with my laptop battery and I gotta have it plugged in so I'm gonna have to fix that thing before I can do any more tuning, at least going down the road. Well, this is uh, another day. Still out here trying to mess with this micro squirt to get it tuned. And you see I got it all pulled up. Yeah, that's one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this thing myself. All right, we're on our way to get this thing dyno tuned and uh, I just meet you at the place because I'm, I'm done. All right, gonna cool, pull up the very cool parts. Uh, I tried and tried and tried to get this thing tuned, but I could not, uh, I seemed like I couldn't get it to work. So right now I done took it to the professionals and we're gonna see what we can do. He's in there right now trying to um, see what I <laughs> probably have messed up and try to correct my errors and stuff like that that I done done to it. But I'll uh, get back with you in a few. Well, it's got it inside. Got it up on the lift, getting ready to go up now. Uh, maybe I didn't mess too much up on it in my my little attempt at trying to uh, use a micro squirt. loaded up on the dyno getting ready to do some dyno runs and see what kind of horsepower I'm working with like I'm saying this is all stock still so what 225 something like that I think I think it's rated at but I'm not sure if that's rear wheel horsepower or um, this overall horsepower but it's on there now so let's watch, watch it and plus he wants me to stand over here for safety reasons of course you all know that Hopefully I didn't, uh, he said I didn't mess nothing up when I was trying to do my tuning, so uh, wasn't that much to correct. He had to put in a few inputs, but not very many. He said it was, wasn't too bad.
Did a, uh, he did some tuning, did some correction, and uh, as you can see, that thing, it sounds pretty good. So right now, we've just uh, waited about 15 minutes. He wanted to wait 15 minutes to, to let it cool down. He said it'll add about another, I think he said four or five horsepower if the motor's cool when he does this final uh, pull. And he's getting ready to do that right now. He just fired it up. Uh, we're gonna do this final pull and see how much horsepower this thing's got in it. And another one. over 200 as you've seen about 210 um, it's good I mean that's what I thought because I know it was 225 and I guess after I guess the 225 that's that's just what it's um, that's, that's, that was the average nice flywheel horsepower okay back in the day okay and you've got long two or you've got short two headers and yeah. yes. which is helping as well but it's still the heads are your big bottleneck right now. Okay. So I need new heads. If I want to get some more horsepower out of it. And we were just talking about the trick flow top end kit and that's gonna be look that's gonna look like it's gonna be my best bet. So that's what we're gonna be looking at. Okay, here's the situation. My parents went away on a week's vacation and they left the key. But uh, here's the situation. My parents went away on a week's vacation. We got uh, the micro scores put in. As you can see, it was on the dyno. And I'm having a problem with it. From, I guess, idle to about 26 to 2800, it's, it's, it's like having a misfire. So, um, the guy that did the tuning, he suggested I get in, in touch with the guy that I bought it from, EFI Source, and I did. I got in contact with Matt from EFI, EFI Source, and he said it might be my TFI that's uh, need replacement. So I went and got a, a cheap one from O'Reilly's. Um, it's like 44 bucks, I think it was. Um, and we're gonna put that on to see if it um, it fixes the situation, because anything above 2800 purrs like a kitten. I mean, it just runs slam out. It runs smooth. I mean, it runs out like a scalded dog. So to see if we can correct that low RPM misfire, we're gonna change out the TFI, and we'll see if that handles it. Let's go. It looks like I'm gonna have to turn the distributor to get that other bolt out of there. See, cause it's tucked up right in there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn it. Well, what you definitely wanna do, if your timing and everything is good, you wanna go ahead and put like a little mark on the distributor so you can put it back in the same spot and that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. Okay, I got it marked. You might not be able to see the mark, but I got it marked in two spots. Right there and right there. Little small marks. You can see right there and right there. You might not be able to see them, but they're there. Now, I'm gonna break the distributor loose and turn it so I can get to the TFI. Wow, a little bit of corrosion or something on there. It might be the issue right there that I got. Not making contact or not being grounded completely. Cause I do believe it being metal back here. I think that is a ground. Y'all let me know down there in the comments if that's what that's supposed to be. But I think that right there might be the problem. So we're gonna clean off. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the new one on there just to make sure and clean off the uh, the little surface right there that it was on. And uh, I'll get back with you in a second. All right, distributor's back. Well, the 
the TFI is the new TFI is in. Everything's connected back. I got everything um, lined back up to where it was. Only thing that's left now is just starting it up, maybe taking it down the road to see how it runs. If this is the fix to this, I'm gonna be so grateful for uh, EFI Source for um, telling me what the problem was with this thing. So let's get that computer hooked up and let's get going down the road. I think we found the problem. I think that was it. Um, I didn't even think to start recording while I started it up, but um, it's running nice and smooth. As you can see, RPMs aren't jumping. See, before they were jumping all the way down to, they was jumping up and down about two or 300 RPMs, but now it's pretty smooth. So now we're gonna go down the road and uh, see what it feels like. Because in fourth and fifth gear, at low RPMs, that's when this thing would bug like a Bronco. So um, I'm not gonna probably film none of that. I'm just gonna take it down the road and I'll be back in a second and let you know how it turned out. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get you set up on the, um, the head cam and uh, I'm gonna take you along on the ride. Let's see what it does. source he solved my problem for me well might have spoke too soon so like right when I got back home and parked and started letting it just sit here and idle it's doing it again a little bit but it's still, it might be that um, that TPI, it might be just the cheap one that's in there that's making it do that. I'm gonna clean that motor craft off and put it back in, and then we'll see what we got after that. But I know it's, it, it's more than likely, it's definitely a distributor problem slash TPI issue. I'm gonna let y'all in on a little something. One thing I forgot to do was put dielectric grease behind it. Don't make that same mistake that I did. But I'm get, I cleaned the Mastercraft back off I'm getting ready to put it back in to see if uh, if it still runs with that. If not, I got to order another one. But more than likely, as old as this thing is, I'll probably end up getting another distributor altogether. But for right now, we're gonna put the Mastercraft back in there and see what it or and see how it runs. Yeah, that uh, that TFI is bad. It's back to idle jumping and all that sort of thing, like it's missing. So. I'm ordering me another Motorcraft. I think I've been saying Mastercraft, but um, I'm ordering me another one of those to put it in and um, we'll see how that goes. I think it should work. All right, yeah, I almost forgot to close this thing out. Um, yeah, my daughter, she came and I started doing a little bit of work on her car. And uh, yeah, got the Fox sitting outside for the time being. But uh, yeah, had to do her headlights, clean them things off, but anyway, uh, I'll keep you updated if I get another distributor or another T TFI module and let you know how it's going probably in the next video. But if you like that, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notifications bell so you can get that fresh stuff when it comes out and we'll see you later.